Screen first world point was a pretty confusing concept when I was learning Unity and something you will likely have to use for most of your games. In this video I will focus on a 2D game since it is slightly easier to grasp the concept and if you are curious about the demo scene here I am using a free asset provided by Unity called Lost Crypt which I will link below. Also I recently passed 300 subscribers so thank you guys for your support and following along. 500 here we come. Unless you are in VR, when you are interacting with a game, your view into that world is through a screen of some sort, whether it be a phone, monitor, iPad, it doesn't matter. You are interacting with a 2D space, and if we treat the screen like a grid with an X and Y axis, the mouse position is represented by an X and Y value relative to its location on the screen. As I move it to the right, the X value increases, as I go up, the Y value increases. The bottom left will always be 0, 0, and the top right value will be the max which in this case when you look at the stats window for the game view it happens to be 1013 by 522 and when I hover my mouse into the top right it should match that value and what the player sees on the screen is based on what the camera shows them we can see that represented by a white rectangle when you select the camera game object in the hierarchy which will mirror what we see in our game view but that is obviously only a small section of the total world so as the camera moves what parts of the world is visible changes as well and it is common to want to get the world coordinates for where the player has their mouse or has touched. So in order to do this in your code, you call this function which is available on the camera object called screen to world point. And there is also a world to screen point to go the opposite direction. And this makes sense when you think about it because the camera is the only thing that can do that translation. It knows the size of the screen and what is currently visible to the player. If you give it the coordinates where the screen was interacted with, it can tell you where in the world that is or vice versa. When you are dealing with 2D, there is a direct one-to-one -one relationship with where that player interacts and where that intersects with the world. When dealing with a 3D world and depth, the only real difference is you would instead do a ray cast from the camera's direction toward the mouse and check if you hit something. So now if I show the world coordinates above the player, you will notice if I place my mouse over the character, the screen and world coordinates are obviously different. And you can see that the X value for the character is a negative value, which you can't have for the screen because like I mentioned, it starts at 0, 0 in the bottom left. The world 0, 0 however is over here, which I have marked with a game object. So if you are to the left of this, your X value will be negative, and if you are below, your Y value will be negative. So you might be asking yourself, why would you ever want to use your mouse as screen coordinates? And why doesn't Unity just give you the world coordinates instead? And a simple use case for that is something that I'm already doing in this example. The coordinate text that follows my mouse around is actually using the mouse's screen coordinates. If I look at the canvas that has that text, you will see that its render mode is screen space overlay. And this is very common that your UI will be relative to the screen. So if we create any game object on this canvas and set its position to be directly what we get back from our mouse, it will follow the mouse around the screen. You could also use this same technique to replace your mouse with an interesting animated game object, for example. So hopefully that helped clarify the screen and world coordinates and when you would use both. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.